Good evening. Welcome. Uh, for those who don't know me yet, uh, my name is uh, Vladimir Shimek. I'm the solutions architect at Amazon Web Services. Now for more than three and a half years already. And today or tonight or whatever you call it, we are going to speak about artificial intelligence or machine learning on AWS, how to start. First thing first is that I will use the terms machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence interchangeably. So if there are any kind of uh, definition purists, you will probably get heart attack. But don't beat me, guys. I really mean it. Like, let's, let's make it clear. Uh, let's not be so picky right now. Because even if you open the page of uh, aws.amazon.com slash AI, it will redirect you to AWS Amazon.com machine learning. So this is probably the way how we prefer to use the term. And you will see in my presentation why we will speak, uh, especially during the brief history of AI ML, why we probably prefer to use the term machine learning than artificial intelligence. So the agenda beside the history, really brief, uh, will be also how Amazon is using AI ML what services are offered. I will try to show some demos, some of them kind of live, some of them not so live, because we are going to speak about machine learning where training the models might take weeks sometimes, and I don't want to hold you that long on this room tonight. And at the end, we'll have a chance for some Q&A. Uh, I will just have to say that I just returned from my vacation, like two and a half months, so please be gentle on me, I'm still like ramping up. So good, let's start. So regarding the history of Amazon Web Service, of uh, artificial intelligence, first before we will go to the history of AI or machine learning on Amazon Web Services, I want to ask you, so it will help me a little bit <coughs> to set up the content, how many of you consider yourself as data scientists here? in this room. Please raise your hand. One. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How many of you consider yourself as developers, but not data scientists? Oh, I would say that 50% plus. I would like to know what is the rest, but I will try <laughs> to figure out during the break. So, good. So, history of AI. Basically, artificial intelligence as a term started in 50s. 1950, uh, by um, Alan Turing who was the first guy who used that term. Uh, the, then there was several, several waves of you know, so-called freeze of AI, and there were several promises what will happen, that we will have like flying cars in 1978 or something. Didn't happen at all. But what happened in the last, I would say, 20 years is that in 1997, Gary Kasparov has been beaten by a computer, Deep Blue, in the chess. In 2005, there was a DARPA challenge in a, in a desert where there was the first self-driving car and the team from Stanford University actually built it and it was able to drive completely autonomously during the desert up to the finish. In 2011, IBM Watson computer beat up the champions in, in Jeopardy. And last but not least, in 2017, the AlphaGo, again computer, has beaten the champion in Go uh, machine. So this shows up that machines are getting better and better in the things that were up to now dominated by the people. This is probably the positive side of the AI. However, there might be a negative one. And the negative has nine <laughs> named Skynet. Actually, what happened in 1997, Skynet became self-aware and started the attack against humankind by uh, firing the ballistic uh, nuclear missiles against Russia and America and killing three billions of people. Well, it didn't happen in 1997, 2004. It really depends which uh, terminated movie you have seen. Truth is, we are not that far with artificial intelligence. There are no robots running on the streets yet. However, there are some guys that are already saying how dangerous artificial intelligence could be. There are other guys that are saying that dealing with the dangerous part of the AI is like dealing of the overpopulation on bars right now, right? So if nothing else, it gives them enough media attention and at least some thought process. So 
what kind of ethic criteria we will put into the development of artificial intelligence. So let's go back to the reality. Also, Amazon is not building Skynet, at least I'm not aware of. Uh, in the least, uh, it, in last 20 years, uh, we have invested a lot into the machine learning. And the reason is it has been pretty useful. The first were the uh, fulfillment centers, where we had to build the predictions for what kind of uh, things will people buy during the season, so we could prepare on the stock. Another thing, uh, what, what knows, who knows what this is? Uh, no, you are an Amazonian. Anyone else? Not Amazonian, please. So this is the robot for <coughs> moving the goods in the, the, in the stock. Exactly. It's uh, Kiva robots that are moving the shelves Shows. in the in the fulfillment center. We should replace Kiva robot with Amazon Robotic. Okay, it, yeah, it has been originally purchased as a company as a Kiva robot, and now it's called Amazon Robotics. Thank you very much. <laughs> so um, when you see how these things work, actually it's like a ballet. It's a, it's a dance. It's a robotic dance, and it looks something like this. So this is pretty cool, I like it a lot. Because these things are moving across the, the fulfillment center and bringing the shelves to the people and they are just picking up the things that they need. And for that, you need a lot of machine learning. Computer vision, you know, planning, and so on and so on. And we have been doing this for quite some time already. The other things uh, with machine learning on Amazon is if you open the page Amazon.com uh, Amazon or Amazon.de, or do we have Amazon CZ already? Mm -hmm. We do. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. <laughs> so Amazon DE. Uh, you will uh, find there the recommendation system. So if you are going to purchase a group like the Lean Startup, the system is able to recommend you other books that might be interesting, interesting for you based on the purchases of any other people that purchase the same group. Another one is to improving the existing product in Amazon. First is the feature called X-Ray. X-Ray is a feature, if you have a Kindle, this ebook reader, uh, some books have this enabled by default, some don't. Uh, and they can, this system X-Ray can set up which characters are important. So you can then, based on the name, like, like Drogo, Hal Drogo, you can find in which chapter this character appears. The same happens with uh, movies. If you watch uh, uh, Amazon Prime videos, you can stop the, uh, the movie that I'm watching, and at the bottom, you will see the characters that are actually playing. Despite the fact that they are not looking at you, so we see them from the back, it's able to identify the Carrie Fisher as Princess Leia, as uh, C3PO, and so on, and there are the links to IMDb where you can you know, click and see more details if you are interested in that. And last but not least, machine learning is used when we are developing new products. How many of you know what this is? Please raise your hand. Ah, oh, much more than a year before. <laughs> About 50% of the, of the room. Yeah, this is called Amazon Echo. This is the first generation. Actually, we have the second. It's on the next screen already. And all the people call it Alexa, because it's a device that's able to understand your language. So you, you speak to that, and it's able to respond, and it's able to do actions like order Uber taxi, or play music from Spotify, and so on and so on. And these skills that are growing every day, there are now, do you have any idea how many skills are now? There are tens of thousands of skills, probably, because Developers can develop their own skills using AWS Lambda. It's pretty cool. So yeah, these are the products, probably except with Kindle, that currently have this Alexa voice enabled. So whether it's uh, I don't know the the Kindle Fire uh, tablet or Kindle Fire TV stick. So everything is now <coughs> you can work with that through the voice. So. Alexa, start the TV channel, play my Game of Thrones first season, part number three, and so on and so on. Uh, Amazon Go. Do you know what this is? Yeah. 
about a third of the room. This is a shop where you can do shoplifting without being catched by the police. Uh, okay, not completely, but it resembles a little bit. You just get in, you, before that, you have to, I don't have the mobile phone here, you have to install the application, connect it to your Amazon.com account. Once you enter, you just scan the barcode on the phone that is set up for you in that application. You can take the things, buy, you know, juice, whatever, and then just go out of the shop without standing in the line, paying cash at the cashier or with your card. It's automatically deducted from your credit card that is registered with your Amazon.com account. It's pretty cool. Like the first time, just a second, first time when I tried it, it was March this year, the feeling that you are just walking out without paying, it's pretty weird, I have to tell you that. <laughs> if it doesn't work, it's on Amazon, I guess. Sorry, didn't get that? If the bill is not deducted from my card, purchased it on Amazon, I guess. It's, uh, it's purchased on your card that is registered with Amazon.com. Uh, right now, we have three of those shops. And just today, I saw an article that by uh, 2021, we plan like 3,000 of those shops. The technology that is used there, it's basically the same that self-driving cars use, like the computer vision cameras because it's able to track your movement uh, through the shop, uh, sensor fusion, so it's able to track which things you take from the shelf, which things you return back, and so on. So this is self-driving car in the current shopping industry. Good, what is our mission on Amazon Web Services? Uh, our mission when it comes to machine learning is we want to put machine learning in the hands of every developer and data scientist because we think and truly believe that AI and ML will influence all the industries that exist currently. So the stack or the offerings or solutions that we offer uh, look something like this. This is, I hope, the current one. Uh, it will change in two months. We are going to have a conference called reInvent where we usually uh, introduce the new solutions. And then myself as a solutions architect spent about a month just learning them. Anyway, so at the bottom, we have the frameworks and infrastructure. This is the part for especially data scientists that want to have complete control over their infrastructure, over the frameworks that they're using, over the machine learning models, and, and so on. On top of that, we have platform services that are usually used by developers and uh, partially data scientists, especially SageMaker, about which I will speak a little bit more in a moment, uh, is probably better for data scientists than for developers. And on the top are the application services that are uh, projected towards using vision, the computer vision, speech, and language without having to train uh, language processing without training models for computer vision and so on and so on. So this is just a part of the customers that are using machine learning on Amazon Web Services currently. Uh, the especially might be NASA or Duolingo and I will use the examples later on as I speak about those products. So let's start at the bottom. Let's start uh, with the frameworks and infrastructure. So infrastructure you need, for, for having, uh, for training machine learning models, you need a lot of compute power. Ideal for this is to use the GPUs, the graphical processing unit, not this, the CPUs, because it accelerates the all computational uh, power considerably. So P3 instances are the easy to instances of virtual machines for those that don't have that much experience with Amazon Web Services. Uh, that are the fastest and most powerful GPU instances in the cloud and have been introduced last reInvent. And they have up to eight NVIDIA Tesla V100 GPUs, which is kind of one petaflop uh, performance. That's something that a few years ago only the most powerful government had at their fingertips. Now you can have it too, if you want to. Uh, Compared to the previous generation of the instance, it's 14 times better in the computational performance and the GPU communication is nine times more. In other words, uh, the customers that started to use P3 instances instead of P2 
uh, decrease their learnings or machine learning trainings from weeks to days, sometimes even from days to minutes. This is pretty cool. So once we have the infrastructure done, okay, we have chosen P3 instance, eight GPU, um, uh, NVIDIA, Tesla built in, you need some operating system and <coughs> applications or frameworks on top of that. We provide it as an AMI or Amazon Machine Image that basically includes pre-installed operating system and the frameworks like TensorFlow, MXNet, uh, MS uh, uh, Microsoft Cognitive Toolkit, Gluon, Cafe, PyTorch, and so on and so on, and the Jupyter Notebooks uh, with Anaconda. <coughs> the underlying operating system is based on your choice, so you can go either with Ubuntu, you can go with Amazon Linux, or I saw today uh, Windows 2016 as well. Pretty surprising, at least for me, that it works on, on Windows. But yeah, we <laughs> offer it, and this arm is free of charge, so you pay only for the compute. Good thing you don't need to install it yourself. It's pre-baked, tested, that it's compatible, so you just choose it as an AMI, as a virtual machine template, run it, and you can start playing with it. What is also interesting when it comes to framework called TensorFlow, which probably you know because it's well known by Google, 88% of TensorFlow projects in the cloud are running on AWS. We are not saying it. It says the a research or analytics company, Nuclear Research, and on this page, uh, D1, AWS static, whatever, I will give you the presentation. You can read the, it's like eight pages study. Why are these computations, like nine out of 10, running on AWS? Good, let's move a little bit up the stack to the platform services. So now, a little bit of uh, data scientists and more for developers. So how do we put uh, machine learning in the hands of developers and literally put it into their hands? With some physical device. This physical device is called DeepLens. DeepLens is a deep learning enabled video camera. Um, I wanted to bring one, but I couldn't get because I just returned from my vacation on Monday and I don't have my own, so I could not meet my colleague who promised that he will give it to me. He was in Seattle this time. So I will do all the best to bring it on the next meetup and do some session with, with this box. Because it's fully programmable video camera. It's optimized for deep learning with the frameworks like MXNet, TensorFlow, and so on. And includes uh, lots of tutorials, some sample code, examples, and pre-built models. If you are in the US, you can buy it yourself on Amazon.com. Mm. We don't deliver it to the Europe yet because it's not approved by some you know, authorities or certified to be sold in the European Union yet. We'll see how it goes. Probably you will be able to buy it as you can buy uh, Amazon Echo. So what you do, you basically deploy the pre-trained educational models or deploy the custom models. So it runs the uh, evaluation on the edge, so on the device. So it doesn't need to send the data to, to the cloud for evaluation and then send it back. What you can do, the other things as well, is you can stream back the video to AWS if you want to. Use systems like recognition video, about which I will speak a little bit later on, integrate with other AWS services. Now, I already mentioned that there are some projects built in. And this is just part of those. First is that you have a picture of something, so I will take a picture of this room on that, and it will transfer it into some kind of artistic style, so it will look like a painting. Or you have something in your hand, and it is able to distinguish whether it, it is or it is not a hot dog, or whether the, whether the animal that you will you know, point the camera on is cat or dog, and so on and so on. What kind of objects are there? So it's a lot of fun. The advantage is, if you are a developer, you don't have to learn the computer vision for yourself because the models are already pre-trained and you can use it for your development for basically getting your hands dirty pretty quickly and easily with a computer vision. The other service that I like a lot is called Amazon Machine Learning. Uh, this is the one we created or introduced about three years ago as the first one. Um, to the hands, it's a managed service for building machine learning models and generating predictions. Uh, you don't need to know anything about machine learning. If you do, it's better, but as a developer, you don't have to. 
integrates with other services, and you can do either batch or real-time predictions, and it's completely serverless. So you don't start any virtual machines, you don't need to take care of any underlying infrastructure, you just put the data in and it runs for you with the prediction. And what I did, I will show you a kind of demo. It will be not live, because if I would let the training model, it would take like 10 minutes, so I'm not going to do it right now, so it's kind of demo. So it's semi. So, how many of you know Kaggle? Kaggle.com. Like five people? Yeah, it's it's great platform for data scientists because it includes um, tutorials, are pretty fine, uh, data sets that you can use in your own projects, and also the um, and the competitions. So you can compete with any other data scientists across the world and see how your model and prediction compares to the one overall the world. So one of the tutorials for the beginners is called uh, Titanic Machine Learning from Disaster. What it basically does, there, is some, there are some files available for you. It's for training, and let me show it to you. It includes the records of the passengers of Titanic. So, uh, I will make it bigger so you can see it better. Can you see that? So this uh, train CSV, let me see. How many records it has? It has 891 actually records or lines because the first is the header. And it includes information as passenger ID, uh, name, age, what kind of class, and so on, on fare, and whether this passenger, this concrete passenger from <coughs> Titanic, has survived the Titanic crash or not. Um, if you ever work with this uh, you know, subset, or, or data set, you already know there was some probability that if you were, for example, female from the higher class, you had something like 90% plus chance that you survive it. If you were a male from the lower class, you probably ended like Leonardo DiCaprio in the movie, <laughs> right? So what I did, I put this uh, train CSV file into the Amazon machine learning without any optimization for parameters, nothing. Under normal circumstances, what you do, this uh, platform splits the training, uh, training data into 70, 30 percent. So 70 is used for training the model and 30 percent for the evaluation. In the first run, I just, I didn't split it. I just let all the inputs, all the data for training the model. So 890 plus. Then I run the evaluation. I got the results and I put it into the Kaggle just to see how the results will look like. So, and the results on the first run was here. I got 79.4% prediction rate. If that's, that doesn't seem enough for you, let's wait until we go to the demo for deep learning for image recognition, and then you will think that 80% accuracy is really cool. Um, Okay, so what I did in the next run, I actually let the split to 70-30, and the results was 78%. So it was even worse. The reason for that, the model had less data for training, right? Uh, what this means for a data scientist is that 80% might be not enough for you. You might need to create your own model based on your own algorithm or framework that you might get better than 79 something percent. However, for developers that have absolutely no idea about the machine learning, this might be a pretty good step to easily get touch for the machine learning and build their applications that will at least resemble some intelligence. Which, when you will put more data there, probably you will get a better, uh, better prediction model. Not to mention it also depends on the features that are there, whether, you know, uh, whether sex or, or the class is the decision factor, or there were some other confounding variables that might be part of the, of the data set. So, let's move on. Uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk. How many of you know this service? Ah, four? Perfect. This is pretty cool service. We call it Artificial Artificial Intelligence. Why is that? It's basically 
you know, when you are training the model, the, the supervised learning, you need to have the label on the data. And someone has to put the labels on the data. Usually it's a job for people, because we, at least at the beginning, before the model is created, we are much better in that. Knowing like what kind of language this is, what is on the picture, and so on, and so on. So Amazon Mechanical Turk is the solution that allows you to do the thing uh, parallelly. So you just have some <coughs> job that you have pictures, let's say 100,000 pictures. You just split it into the task. You define what you need to know, like object recognition, whether there is, I don't know, person, cat, uh, dog, whatever. And you will let Mechanical Turk do the job for you, where actual live people or dead people will do this labeling for you, for like peanuts, really. So you can easily get this labeled data at the end that you can use for training your models. So it's not pure artificial intelligence, but it's artificial artificial intelligence. Pretty cool service. And there are plenty of companies that are using this. Uh, guys from Pinterest or Facebook uh, research, uh, they use it, I suppose, for image recognition, at least for training or labeling the data that they need to, uh, to put into their models. Uh, so machine learning process is hard. Uh, I saw a few data scientists here, so you probably will not you know, argue with me that 70-80% of your work is just the data wrangling. So cleaning the data sets, setting up the, the proper formatting, making sure that the, the characters or the, the attributes that you got there or features are in the same format, like US with the capitals, US with the small caps, uh, USA and so on. It's all the same data, but it might be in different shape, different format and so on. So by patching the data and cleaning and formatting the data, yeah, it's 80% of the sexiest job of the 21st century. So probably it doesn't sound that sexy anymore. So once you have the preparer, preparation and transformation of the data, you can finally do what's the, what's the bread and butter for the data scientists. You can train the model. So you might have some hypothesis that this is the uh, algorithm that we have to use. This is the data. And once you get the model, you have to evaluate it, whether the prediction rate is high enough that you can put it into the production. And once you put it into production, again, you need to some set up and uh, scale some cluster that will, through the API or any other way, respond to the new data or to the query so we'll be able to do the prediction, whether it's batch, whether it's real time, and so on. What we saw with some of our customers is that this project from idea to production takes six to 18 months. It's too long. If it takes 18 months, then you're doing something wrong. So for that, we introduced last year a solution called SageMaker. SageMaker is a managed service that provides the quickest and easiest way for your data scientists and developers to get machine learning models from idea to production. It's completely end-to-end -end machine learning platform. So it does for you the training the model, evaluation, and the deployment into the production. It's zero setup. Zero setup in the meaning you don't have to set up your own cluster. It does it for you automatically. You can choose any available uh, framework that exists, whether it's Cafe, whether it's MXNet, whether it's Glue on TensorFlow, and so on. Because our intention in Amazon is not to restrict our customers to what they do with the platform. If you like <coughs> TensorFlow, use TensorFlow. If you prefer AnixNet, use it. Feel free. And you pick by the second. So the time, the evaluation might take, I don't know, five minutes, five hours, five days. Once the evaluation is done, it turns off and you don't pay for that. This is pretty cool. So I will just it's the process basically mapped to the SageMaker, but I will try to go to, again, kind of demo, because it will be not completely live. Oops. Uh, so once you, let me open this. So SageMaker, if you log into the console, uh, let me go to the console by default, so. For those who don't have experience with Amazon Web Services, this is how it looks like. You log in and you choose first the region <coughs> Island currently, 
but you can switch to any region that the SageMaker is uh, available, and you can find in the documentation which, re which regions it is and which is not. Frankfurt and Ireland, I think, are currently available. Definitely Ireland, I guess. Today. So you open the SageMaker, and what I did as a first step is I created the notebook. The notebook, again, is some kind of pre-created machine that runs Jupyter Notebook for you with pre-installed uh, frameworks like TensorFlow, MXNet, and so on, and you connect to it through the web browser, as you usually do with the Jupyter Notebook. The advantage is you don't have to set up your own environment in your own notebook, and it runs in the cloud. So if someone steals your laptop, the data is in the cloud, not on your laptop. This is pretty good security precaution for companies that actually need that. So as a first, I run this uh, or recreated this notebook instance because creating it takes like five to 10 minutes. And you can see MX4 large, so you can then search like how much RAM does it have, I think 16 GB, whatever. This is not important right now, but you can open it. So when I click on open, it opens the Jupyter notebook. So, and in this Jupyter Notebook, I already have one file, but you have plenty of SageMaker examples. These examples, you can play with yourself. They include, I will show you one, they include things like introduction to algorithms, the machine learning, Python, Spark, uh, some tuning of the hyperparameters, and scientific details of algorithms. So if you choose any of those, click on use, you have it. I already have this one uh, pre-created or pre-tested. It's end-to-end -end multi class image classifier from the uh, Caltech 256 dataset. For those who don't know or never heard, it's the, it's the repository of 30,000 plus images with labels. So based on that, if you train the model on this data model, it should be able to distinguish or to recognize objects. So what I did is on the first run, I run all this, uh, yeah, all this uh, Jupyter notebook. Uh, it took like 15, 20 minutes. I'm not going to step by step right now. Until I went to the inference where I created the model. And in the model, it deployed the, uh, the Docker based with API uh, running endpoint. And it took also something like 10 minutes. And at the end, I created, uh, I did inference. So I downloaded one of the files of one of the pictures, and I let it recognize what that is. So on the first run, as I trained the model, like 10 minutes. So it, it went two times uh, through the model training. So, and uh, let me show you first this one. So this was the picture that will be there as well in the Second training. So on the 10 minutes model, so I let them like recognize, please, what that is. And the result is clutter with 7% probability. So now those 80% probably looks better. But what I did, actually, I let it run more often through the model. So I, I let 20 epochs instead of two, which was the original one. And it took one hour, approximately. <coughs> If you, if you take a look at the, at the SageMaker, if I open it here, let me see training jobs. You see the first was 10 minutes, so this was the 7% probability, and then I run it 20 times through the data set, it took an hour. Okay, so let's run it now. So let's do the inference, run photo, download the same test image, be able to see it, so you see it's the same stuff. And now the truth comes. Let's see how it recognizes. It's mattress. So if you didn't know, you just saw mattress with 68% um, accuracy. So probably we would need to run the model or uh, the training much, much more. Uh, this is the reason why I, why I thought that 80% of the machine learning on the Titanic survival data wasn't that bad at the end. So you can see the job of the data scientist might be pretty frustrational because you start a model and go for a coffee and then you get, I don't know, cigarette break. Good. 
and let's move on. So let's move a little bit up. We currently skip the things like Spark. Spark and EMR is the uh, service that has been long, long time on Amazon Web Services. It's a Hadoop cluster that runs for you on demand. Like within 10 minutes, you can have Hadoop cluster of 100 instances or 10 instances, whatever you want. You just perform the stuff, shut it down, and you pay only for seconds it was running. This is pretty cool. Uh, and you, of course, can have Spark pre-installed on that, so you can have your Spark inference. So, application services. For developers that want to put some intelligence into their uh, applications from the vision, speech, and language point of view. So, vision. Amazon recognition image. We came with this solution almost two years ago, and basically through the API, you provide picture, and it is able to do the object and scene detection, like it is able to see cyclist with a 73% confidence, the bicycle with 98.6 confidence, and so on and so on. It can perform facial analysis. So it can see uh, whether you are smiling or not, face comparison, so if some faces are uh, similar or not, facial recognition, celebrity recognition, not only on Jeff Bezos, but actually I tested it uh, last year when I was doing uh, training for one of the customers in Czech Republic. I was testing it on uh, the Prime Minister, it was working. In, uh, in Austria, I was testing it with Conchita Wurst, it was working as well. And image moderation, so it may detect things like nudity and so on on the, on the images, so it can just give you some warning when things like that happen. So what we added, the functionality is also text recognition in images, so it's able to see on that uh, the mug, it's Monday, but keep smiling, and you see the confidences are pretty high, over 96%, uh, <coughs> and it's used by a customer like SmugMug, and it's also able to do the real-time face search. So if you have a data set uh, of, of faces indexed in that system, it's able, within half of the second response time, recognize the faces, and it enables you immediate response. I know this might a little bit tell you something about Big Brother and these kind of things, but it might be used for good purposes as well, not just by some strange government. Uh, the customers, as you can see, is not just government. Uh, are the uh, Pinterest guys, are the SmugMug guys, and so on and so on. Uh, so, yeah, that was picture. What I heard last two years from customers, yeah, pictures are fine. But if we put video, which is like 30 pictures per second, into the service, it will be too much expensive. Not to mention we will lose things like movement. So the, the solution will be not able to track movement of the people. So yeah, we introduced recognition video that does basically all the same functionality like recognition on the images, object, person, oh, person tracking is the new one, face recognition, content moderation, and celebrity recognition, and person tracking, is the new one. So how you can feed the data? You have two options. Either you put them onto the object store, a stream, or you stream them live through the Amazon Kinesis video stream. The use cases, media and entertainment, of course, public safety, and you can do the monitoring for smart home. So if you have camera at home, you can know that uh, your wife is at home, and probably your neighbor as well when you are working, and that means something wrong. Good. Uh, I have a small video uh, as a demo here, so you can see the system is able to track things like people, their movement, things like dog, cars, and so on, so you get these things with, with Amazon recognition video. This is pretty cool, I like it a lot. Speech. Amazon Poly is the main service that does the text-to-speech translation. Currently, it's available in 27 languages. Unfortunately, Czech is not there yet. However, if you speak Hindi or want to hear Hindi or French or Canadian French or German in like six or seven different voices, uh, you can have it in Poly and let speak to you. What one of my colleagues did, uh, I think last year, he uh, developed a plugin for, for WordPress. So now you can have web pages that are, you can do whatever you want, <coughs> you can let it read with you. 
even if you open the block AWS blocks, there is a this plugin already implemented, so you just let it run and let it read for you, so you don't have to read it yourself. Uh, use cases, of course, mobile desktop applications, educational learning, telephony, and game development. So I was playing a little bit with that, just basic things. Uh, let me show it to you on the console. So again, let's go to the console, and let's go to Poly. And here you choose the language, but you need to just scroll down and make it a little bit bigger for you so you can see it better. So you see from Chinese, Mandarin, up to Danish, Dutch, several versions of English, uh, French, German, Hindi, Japanese, up to Turkish and Welsh. So I was playing with Chinese, Mandarin. Okay, I got only the Ni Hao part, but not the rest of it. But uh, what I what I was doing also, I was putting the text into into the English US and let Sally. Hi, my name is Sally. I will read any text you type here. So if I type any text here, <coughs> hello, Alts. In AWS Meetup Prague. Hello, fellow folks in AWS Meetup Prague. So it can read for you. And by accident, I copied it to Chinese Mandarin. <coughs> so it was there. I let it run. Hello, fellow folks in AWS Meetup Prague. <laughs> so you can get the Chinese accent from that. This is pretty cool. I like it a lot. So for training and education, might be super. So yeah, this is Poly. Uh, again, it's everything on AWS platform. It's just API call. So you can easily integrate it into your application and let it read for you. Again, check is not available, but if it comes probably in Jekyll Poly, it might be pretty cool. I, I'm, I'm keen to see what developers will create with this, with this solution. So, uh, regarding customers, this is the one that resonates with me, Duolingo. If you, if you use this application for language learning, they're using actually Poly to read it for you, which is pretty fine. Like so Transcribe, another service. Uh, it's automatic speech recognition, and basically this is the opposite of Poly. This is speech to text. So if you have recording from the telephony or regular microphone, Kind of thing you can let it uh, write to you the text that has been spoken on that record. It's integrated with S3, so I just put there the, the recording in VAL, MP4 format, whatever you got. Uh, it includes time spans. It is able to recognize uh, multiple speakers, and in case you need it, it has custom vocabulary. So, especially you know, in large corporations, we used to use these three letter abbreviations a lot. So uh, transcribe might not recognize it by default, but if you upload it as a custom vocabulary, you might get much better trans, uh, transcription from that. The use case is call centers, uh, subtitles for video on demand. Actually, if you run the Amazon, uh, Amazon Video or Prime Video, uh, you can set up the, the titles, subtitles for that. If it's not run with transcribe, it's at least with the technology that the transcribe is based on. Uh, and you can transcribe the meetings, so you don't need secretary sittings on the long board, boring meetings. You can have just recording and put it into the transcribe and it will do it for you. Amazon Lex, another one that is used a lot with guys that like to do chatbots. This is the service that uh, uh, allows you with one-click deployment uh, to the text-to-speech integrated with Poly, uh, speech-to-intent, so if you speak to Amazon Lex like you speak on Alexa, it's the same technology actually, it is able to translate uh, into the written text and understand what I am trying to achieve. So for example, I saw, uh, I don't have the, the demo here, but I saw examples like uh, checking uh, the flight. So it's able to know that you need flight from Prague to New York next Friday. So it's able to translate this into the data 
like what it will be the day on the next Friday and so on and understand that what kind of flight it has to uh, reserve for you. And it's dialog management. So the use case, contact center bots. Now we have also integration with Amazon <coughs> Connect, which is our contact center uh, solution. So if you just connect Lex to that and it's able to manage the automated part that usually we all hate because it's not working. But with Lex, I saw pretty nice examples that it's working well. Informational bots and all other bots that you might think of. So Amazon Lex. Here is a few of the examples of customers. I like the NASA logo there, uh, but currently don't have details what they do with it. Probably the next Mars rover will be able to respond with Amazon Lex. I don't know. Uh, Amazon Translate. Neural machine translation. Uh, this is a translation service. So if you have the urge or need to translate from English to any other of the 12 languages that we currently support, and Czech is one of them, uh, you can do it or vice versa. So from Czech back to English, it's able to do. And I was doing tests today, just by example. So I opened the article on the Ines. For those who don't speak Czech, this is a Czech newspaper. And I just copied the, let me see if this will work. So I'll go to the translate. Try. So I will let it recognize the language. Just copy it there. Let me move the. And I want to have it into translated into English. It was able to detect that the language is Czech, CZ. And the Czech Republic ranked just behind the US, only Slovenia in the second, the 22nd place is better off from Central Eastern Europe. Poland finished in 1963. Let me see. Polsko skončilo 32. That's not a translation. And Slo Slovakia still three positions below. In addition to the winning Norway, the three countries with the highest score are Iceland and Switzerland. Among the countries uh, are Chad and uh, Afghanistan. I removed it. See if it's in here? No, I didn't translate. So Afghanistan probably doesn't recognize. But beside the Czech numerics, 32, 33, it's pretty good with the translation. <coughs> so if you, if you put there a number or just something else, it might recognize it much better. Uh, and I will come back uh, to the product team with the feedback to, to retrain the model with uh, those things. Anyway, so you can use it uh, for translation if you need to to and from 12 more languages. We are coming with six more pretty soon, and probably on the reInvent we will introduce even more than that. So I did the translate demo. The, another service is Comprehend, the last service I'm going to speak about. It's the natural language processing. It's a solution that with uh, um, the pre-trained model that you don't have to train yourself as a developer. It's able from the English text currently to get the sentiment, entities, key phrases, languages, and topics modeling. And it's powered by deep learning. Example, so if you have a text like Amazon.com is located in Seattle, Washington, was found in July, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it is able to extract insights like these are the entities, Amazon.com, yeah, it's organization. Seattle, Washington is location. July 5th is date and Jeff Bezos is a person. So all the key phrases, customers, books, trade prices, blenders, and what's the sentiment of that, whether it's positive, negative, or neutral, and what is the language. Not sure right now if we support also other languages. I think English, definitely, and Spanish is the other one, but need to check 100%. Uh, at least I have it in the notes, which I unfortunately don't see in this presentation right now. So uh, the use cases, yeah, you can analyze the voice of the customer. So imagine the solution that you have recording from the call center, uh, the voice on the, on the audio file, then use, transcribe, 
to get it into the text, and then you use comprehend to get the insights from that text. Uh, semantic search, so you can search by key phrases, topics, and so on, and knowledge management. Actually, uh, our team in, uh, in artificial intelligence was interested how they can build the multilingual social analytics from Twitter. So for that, they use Kinesis to get the Twitter uh, tweets in near real time. Then use the translate to translate it into the English if that was a different language. Uh, transcribe to get the text. Then use to comprehend, to understand, then store it into the S3 and analyze with Athena and visualize with the quick site. Actually, this whole solution is completely serverless. They didn't have to spin any server to get this. So from this, they got insights like what are the most discussed entities uh, on uh, the tweets with the hashtag AWS, so AWS, Amazon, Cloud, Lambda, S3. What are the entities that are discussed, like organization, person, quantity, and so on, and the other topics like the solutions or products of AWS, Lambda, EC2, S3, and so on. So uh, also, let me ask you two questions. First, how long do you think it will take to build this one? Any opinions? One day. Any other? Yeah, the only AWS it takes. One day? <laughs> <laughs> you knew it. No. And how much does it cost? Uh, let me just give you an example. Uh, Amazon Web Services every day gets 30 to 40,000 tweets every day. So how much will it cost to run per day this solution? Give me some bucks. number, some costs. 10 bucks. OK, 10 bucks. Yeah. Someone more or less? 20. 100. How much? 20. 20? 50. 50? <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, between 10 and 20, closer to 20. It's 17 bucks per day. So imagine that. You can have for the large corporation this analytic system that costs 17 bucks a day. Pretty cool. So, uh, this is the whole stack that we just went through. As you see, the easiest way how to work with this is open the console and play with it. Try yourself. Different languages on poly, uh, different text on things like comprehend or translate and so on. Uh, the data sets for the Amazon Machine Learning from Kaggle and so on. And once you know how to do it, you can put it through the API calls, through the SDK, on any language that support, which are actually most of the existing, like JavaScript, Python, Go, whatever, C Sharp, uh, and you can build it into your applications. The starting point for AI ML is HTTPS, AWS, Amazon.com, slash, you can put this AI, but you will be redirected to the machine learning, and you will be there. Good, any questions?